Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, Soul Nation. Today we're going to be doing the Samurai Controller Guide for Final Fantasy XIV. In this guide, we're going to show you how to set up your controller, all the different settings that I use. We'll talk about your targeting and how to make that much easier and faster, especially if you're playing on a controller. We're going to go over my skills and my layout and how I've got everything set up. And finally, we'll cover any kind of macros or other things that I'm using. There's a couple of things that I need to point out to you right at the start of this video because they are a little bit controversial. Yes, I am using a macro. Yes, macros will tend to actually lower your DPS. In my case, my this macro actually increased my DPS by 4,000 points per second, which was a huge boost. But I would not recommend using macros if you're trying to go into the hardest end content. So try to use this guide kind of as a learning step, a way to get comfortable and feel free to take anything you learn out of this and make it your own. You don't have to do everything that I'm saying specifically, but hopefully this is going to be a good introduction to the to the class uh, you know, or a job, <laughs> and a good introduction to how to play it on the controller, how to target. And as always, I'd love to know any thoughts, any questions that you have. As a final note, before we dive into the guide, you can always jump to any specific section of my videos by just using the YouTube playhead. So feel free to skip over my longer intros like this. I do apologize. And then finally, I am dyslexic. I struggle sometimes with words. And when it comes to the samurai and Japanese pronunciation, I am going to apologize right now. And we're going to leave it at that. Um, I, I'm not going to pronounce these words correctly. I'm going to try my best. But if you are audio sensitive to those kind of mispronunciations, I might recommend Desperious Final Fantasy XIV if you're looking for a different type of guide. In that case, then maybe just take the controller section of it and the layout and just ignore how I'm speaking. All right. Without further ado, thank you, everybody, for sitting through that epic intro. You have earned the title of O oh, Honored One. So enjoy that as being a part of this subscriber base here. And let's talk about the Samurai. So let's go ahead and start at the main menu or in the game. You can actually go to system configuration and you're going to want to make sure your gamepad is enabled. I just want to show that here. You can also play around with any of your buttons and play around with your settings. Like if you're having problems with your controller, if your like sticks are messing up or maybe a button's not working specifically, or you want to even display like the PlayStation icons or the Xbox icons, that's going to be how you get that all set up right here from the start. But pretty much the majority of this first part of the guide is going to focus in on our character configuration section. You can see here I use legacy type. This is camera based movement. So if we close out of this window real quick, you can see that when I am moving around, I kind of move in this kind of 3D space. That is legacy movement. Now, if you just kind of highlight standard type movement, if I go ahead and apply the settings here as well. Now, when I press backwards, I back up and I press forwards, I'm going to move forward. So you kind of have this typical, maybe what you're used to on a mouse and keyboard style movement on the controller as well. Now, again, my preference ends up being uh, in the uh, legacy type camera based movement. So just kind of play around with that. If you are new to and never used the controller before, you can always switch to controller and keyboard and mouse via this giant toggle button. In fact, you actually have two different UI setups for it. In fact, you can still use the controller while in keyboard and mouse mode. So it just notes that it changes a lot of different things. The system is always ready to receive your controller input and your keyboard input. Now I wanna focus in on targeting. Targeting tends to be kind of real key aspects that people struggle with within the Final Fantasy XIV. Now I say automatically face target when using an action, enable auto target when no target is specified, disable targeting of pets and minions when in battle. Typically I don't need to interact with them, nobody really does, so I can go ahead and do that. Under filters, this is really important, and I'm going to highlight what this looks like for you guys here. When my weapon is sheathed, because by pressing down uh, or as a click on the left stick, it will sheathe and unsheathe your weapon, uh, I want to be able to select more things, like alliance members, non-party player characters, all enemies, aggroing, NPCs, objects, and the like. However, if my weapon is drawn, I assume that I am ready for battle, and thus I only want to focus in on enemies. Let's go ahead and highlight what that actually looks like from a targeting perspective. So if I have no target selected, I can actually go ahead and press A and it's going to select whatever it feels like is the closest thing. This is actually really nice, especially if you're in a giant crowd of people and this works from any range. So with a target selected, I am have my weapon sheathed and I have it withdrawn so you can see me kind of putting it away. If I press left and right on the D-pad, this is where the filter comes in and it's just gonna cycle anything that it thinks that I can target based off of my filter for where my weapon is sheathed. If I bring out my weapon, now if I press left and right, you can see here it's only targeting between these two things or nothing whenever the camera is not on the screen. So note that it won't move targets here if it cannot see it. See how it's still soft targeting the other dummy? 
uh, in that case, yes, because it is also going to be using the angle in which that my camera is. However, if I engage with said enemy, and I hold on, let me just go ahead and start the fight, you can actually use your R bumper and L bumper to easily switch between targets. So now I've actually brought up two targets, and don't mind my horrible rotation here as I try to demo the targeting side of this piece. I have two targets and they're being displayed here as a part of my uh, enemy list. You can always configure this under your HUD layout if you want to change out where your enemy list is located and, and its size and more. So just kind of play around with that. You see this target, I can actually double click on the right stick and make it a little bit bigger if I want to have a little bit more input onto my different enemies. And with that enemy list here, uh, like you can see here, if I'm holding down the trigger, pressing left and right bumper will switch between targets that I've engaged with. Holding down left bumper and actually pressing up and down will soft target switch between enemies as well. Now, when I, let's say you're doing something uh, non-samurai and you want to target a party member, pressing up and down will actually cycle through your party member list. So I keep it to where left and right will target uh, everything out there and that's why I turn off party members and then up and down will target and let you cycle through party members themselves. I'm going to reset my immunity, my aggro with these guys and that's essentially a basic of targeting now i use a xbox series elite uh, 2 controller this is not a promotion they do not sponsor me whatsoever uh, and when i actually am targeting and holding down the trigger i can actually use left bumper and right bumper to be able to uh, do that and that's actually via the paddles that i've got set up behind uh, the, uh, the system so it actually works out really well it's incredibly comfortable if you do have the funds i highly recommend it as a controller that's what i use also another really great controller is the playstation 5 controller uh, but I like this one because it does have the backwards, uh, the, the back paddles as well. PlayStation has kind of a touchpad, which it gets to take advantage of in this case. All right. Anyway, so that's targeting, targeting, and that is kind of some of my settings that I've got listed here. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to spend some time in my hotbar settings because you can see here my hotbar is laid out quite differently than you might expect, or at least if you haven't seen my videos before. Note that I'm not actively dragging and dropping skills onto this hotbar. I'm not actively clicking on anything in this hotbar. This is set to hotbar three, which if I turn it off, you can see that disappearing right here. Hotbar three, the reason is, is because it doesn't have a number listed out here. If I turn on hotbar one, you can see hotbar one showing up here with these numbers listed on them and I don't like that personally and that's just my personal preference. So I've got hotbar three so I don't have any numbers around that. I'm not clicking on them. To do it, to access this, you can always hold down L, uh, left bumper and or L1 and then pressing the right stick as a click and then all of a sudden your, your uh, controller is gonna act as a mouse and you can use your left trigger and right trigger as left click and right click and you can drag and drop things on to that bar. Holding down L bumper and Pressing the right stick again, turns that off, and then your uh, right stick goes back to being a uh, controlling the camera, so to speak. So just note, this is just to communicate cooldowns to me so I know when things are available uh, for me to use. We'll cover more of that in our layout section of the guide itself. So that's set to hop R3. I've got it set as a kind of a 12 by one, and that's pretty much how I have it. Now I do have display recast timers, hide unassigned slots is turned on. Uh, this is if I turn it off, you can see here all these different floating hot bars that I've got right here. I'll cover what's going on over here uh, just in a minute. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Um, I have uh, display hot bar numbers turned off. So I, otherwise you would see these different hot bar numbers kind of floating out there in space. I have enable hot bar cycling turned on include pet hotbar when cycling and enable drag and drop repositioning. So those are a couple settings that you have access to. Under sharing, what sharing means is that your class and your job act uh, both independently, but uh, they have their own setup. So every job, it's going to have their own skills. So if you wanna have something that's shared between all of your jobs, because on one character, you can play all the jobs, all the classes, everything, uh, you want to be able to say, hey, all my mounts and all my like my sprint and my limit break, like I need that on everything. So you can actually set up a shared bar. Otherwise, you can have specific things that are set up to just your current job. And you can see that for the cross hop bar as for the hop bar as well. So I set cross hop bar for seven and eight uh, to shared and everything else is job specific. And then for my regular hop bars, eight through 10 is shared and then one through seven is job specific. Then under the cross, I do have enable cross hotbar, always display cross hotbar. I have turned off display cross bar help, but you can turn this on if you need. If I hit apply and I activate it, you'll see that their skills and their names actually show up when I hold down the trigger. But that can kind of get a little bit busy. Once you get a little bit comfortable, you can actually turn off that display hotbar help. And then there you go, it makes it nice and clean. 
Setting the uh, use pet hotbar to true, use mount hotbar, enable duty action input, and display control guide all turned on. I rock hold mode. If you are struggling with accessibility, maybe controllers are also a little bit too hard to handle, you can always switch to toggle or mixed mode. Toggle essentially means you only have to press the right trigger once. If I hit apply and press the right trigger, it's going to remain active and turned on, uh, but you're going to lose access to some of the skills. So everything that you see here with the W cross hop bar and the expanded cross hop bar is all under the hold mode. You will lose access to expanded and double depending on which mode you choose here, toggled or mixed. So then I also have always display W cross hop bar. I can actually turn that off and I can double tap and make it appear magically, but I would like to see those skills. So I have that turned on. I have returned to cross hop bar after W cross hop bar input. This gives me something, the ability to use a cooldown and have it automatically shift into my rotation without having to like try to remember positionally where, what hop bar I'm on. And then you can also turn on positioning your hop bar separately and independently of your cross hop bar. So you can see here, I do that just to have a little bit of a better visual flair, so to speak. If you're having a hard time double uh, clicking the right uh, trigger or the left trigger, you can always adjust your WXHB input and change that timing there. All right, final piece of all of this before we get into our layout section, you've got enable the expanded controls with left trigger plus right trigger. So holding down left trigger, pressing right trigger is gonna bring up the expanded. And you can see here I use for left trigger then right trigger, it's cross hop bar two left, and that's not shared, that's job specific. Uh, if I go right trigger then left trigger, that's gonna be seven right, which is shared. So this is where I got my mount roulette, I got a couple of books, I got all kinds of little micros and things like that to kind of use. Then same kind of thing, double tap WHXB with left trigger and right trigger. I have enabled a directional buttons. That's why I get all eight listed out there. And I set this to three left and three right. You cannot drag and drop skills onto the double tap here. You do have to go to the map top bar. So if you hold down R1, you can see here, it shows you the list of all your hop bars right here. And I can move over to three and you can see it's directly mirrored right here. And you're gonna have to interact with this to, to affect that. So just note that's the one limitation of that system itself. So uh, final piece of this is that you, I have enable customization for when my weapon is sheathed, only to go to one, seven and eight. And then I have enable customization for when my weapon is drawn, that's gonna go to one. So to show you what all that looks like, if I just tap R1, I can tab between a couple of different hot bars right here, got a little bit of access. But now if I take my weapon out and I accidentally press R1, it's still not gonna navigate me off of this view. So you have a couple of things that you can do here. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of ways that you can build out this setup. All right, so that's kind of our settings. That's all the stuff in a nutshell that you need to know about how to target and get yourself configured for the controller. Hopefully that was a help, but let's go ahead and move right into the layout and the settings that I've got here for my skills. We're gonna start here with my cooldowns, a bar here at the top. I'm actually gonna show you my HUD layout so you can see the different uh, things that I am using right now. I've got my sin gauge and my kanky gauge listed right here, kind of staged between them. So they're visual. Whenever I see them, I know what's going on with them. Hop bar three, cross hop bar uh, listed right here. And you can always just kind of position these and resize these as needed. I also have my debuffs and my buffs. And if you ever need to kind of play around with these settings, note that you can actually split your buffs, debuffs, and food into three separate groups, or you can actually display it as one single status bar element. So you can kind of play around with that. Um, so that's the HUD layout. I got my party list, my map up here. And then I have this special hop bar, which I actually use to kind of train myself in terms of my rotation and my opener. Uh, obviously, I'm going to recommend Desperius or the Balance Discord if you guys really want to get into the nitty gritty and mastering kind of the your min max terms of rotation. But what I'm advocating here is use your UI tool to train you in those rotations. So you can see here, this is my general rotation. And that is going to help if I get lost while fighting and trying to make sure I'm trying to push my DPS to the best that I can and trying to just overall improve my DPS itself. Now, like I said at the start of this video, and in case anybody's kind of skipped, uh, there is a macro in this uh, in this whole setup. And the reason there's a macro is it just makes it easier for me on controller. It's actually improved my DPS by 4,000, uh, 4, which is was kind of substantial. It started off at 6,000, but overall it's improved my DPS by 4,000. So I'm quite pleased with that. But generally macros will lower your DPS. So if you're really trying to mid max, I would not recommend using a macro. And that's just how the macros have been coded into this game. We're still gonna review it. I'm gonna keep putting out that warning. So I am i don't wanna <laughs> just sit here and be on record like Brian says macros are better than whatever. No, I'm not saying that. They are better for me 
in this one situation. So keep that in mind. All right, so here we've got Yatin, then I've got Bloodbath, then I've got uh, Second Wind. Again, these are all cooldowns that are a part of my expanded cross hotbar. You can see them when I hold down left trigger and right trigger. Then I've got Senai, Hisano Senai, uh, Tambagenshi, uh, and uh, Shosha. Uh, and those are three abilities that actually make up this macro. So I'm gonna go and show you that macro real quick because it's actually, I think that important that we kind of talk about it right now. So for macros themselves, you can actually see I'm, I'm using the icon Shoha, Shoha as a part of it. I'm also putting that line at the very bottom because it has to process kind of each line. It doesn't matter where the icon is being displayed and on this. So you could actually have it display any of these one abilities. It's up to you. But it uses fail through and because these three abilities are all off the global cooldown and they all have their own uh, sense of uh, recast, it's going to fail through. First, you're going to end up doing this ability, then you'll end up doing this uh, ability, and then finally you'll do that ability. The nice thing is if any of these come up, you can always use this, this button to do any of those abilities once they are ready and available for you to use. And that's why I've actually macroed all three because it saved me some space and allowed me to put more uh, items here, more uh, skills on my hotbar itself. So those are there just to communicate what I have available and what the cooldown is, but I know that, that this one macro is essentially I'm not going to say smart enough, but it's versatile enough to be able to have that level of impact. All right, so that's the macro. Let's go ahead and go off my double cross off our left. I've got Meditate, Arms Length, Faint. Then I've got Sengan. Then Ikatsuntin, Higabana. Well, this is essentially the your ability that you build up to. We'll talk more about that. Then I've got Third Eye, followed by True North. Again, these are all set as a part of Hot Bar 3, so just keep that in mind. Then on my left hotbar, I have it set up for my AOE rotations, my different AOE skills that I need and want to have access to. I've got Fuga, Oka, uh, Mengetsu. So essentially why you'll see a lot of these abilities on the ABXY axis is they're easy to move around and fire off skills. So it gives me a little bit more mobility in my personal take. Then I got Kuten right there. Then I've got Gurin. I have the Tambani Gensai there, uh, Hagen Kur. And then again, that uh, Higginbon Ikano or whatever the uh, skill is, we'll cover it again here in a second. On my right hand side, generally, this is where I think my single target rotation. I've got uh, Hakase, Jimpu, and Gecko. Now, one of the reasons why I've changed this up from my core uh, main uh, video that I put out last year was I want to make sure that I keep my damage up. You want Shifu and Jinpu up all the time. That's increasing your damage and increasing uh, your uh, weapon skill uh, speed in this case. Now, when you look at your rotation, I'm going with the Jinpu opener uh, before I actually worry about just putting on Shifu. But with Jinpu, that's going to increase my damage, it, you know, boost all of my skills, especially with damage over time. This being a one minute dot that you can put on your, en your enemies. So keep that in mind. I ended up because I, based off of my tanks, based off of the other jobs I play, I have a bad habit of needing to make sure that kind of just defaulting into this default rotation when I'm trying to think, it's always important that you're doing something. So if you're going from, if you're really trying to improve your skill, always be doing something. And so that's kind of where I, I default to. So I used to have it with uh, the Shifu to Kasha, but you can easily put Kasha and then you could put uh, Gecko here and then Yakaza here. Cause if you look at the symbols, uh, I used to line them up with the symbol so I could look at the symbol and, and immediately know what I have, but I kind of shifted it because I, I definitely want to make sure I keep that DPS uh, increase up and that just has overall uh, been a positive impact as well. Um, anyway, like I said here also, then I have Yukaze and then I have my finisher, which is the macro of these three abilities. In the upper right hand, I've got uh, Cotton here, uh, Katen, uh, which is my damage up boost. I have uh, Shinten, which is an off the global cooldown, nice, awesome ability. You can basically, it's a, uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a, a dump of your uh, Kenki gauge. Then I've got Mateka uh, Sensui, and then we also have, again have uh, uh, Ishikoten uh, here as well. Plus I have a Tinker of Strength just to overall increase my damage uh, on the job itself. Now let's go ahead and move into my hotbar too. And here you can see I've got uh, Goten and Yaten, so my in and out. I used to have those macros, but that could be that could be end up being kind of tricky. And then I have Empi, which is my ranged attack. So if you get pushed away from the boss, always be Empying. There's no uh, there's no reason not to. You're not going to kill your TP. So just note that you have that ability. Merciful Eyes, Bloodbath, Second Wind, and Third Eye, all listed out right there. 
So you can see that I have access to all these skills and I usually keep my stun in the same spot no matter what. So that way, no matter what I'm playing, I have access to my stun itself. So that is my layout. Those are my skills. That is somewhat of my rotation and my opener. If you guys have any questions, if there's something I didn't cover, if you're still confused, just let me know in the comments, check out our Discord, check out Balance and Desperous if you're really looking at pushing your mid-max and diving into your stats. And because all y'all always tend to ask like, what am I using? Right now I've got 510 gear, I've got various materia attached into it. So if you wanna know, like this is kind of the gear that I've got. Pretty much all the 510 set outside of, you know, you can't see belts, don't matter. So that is currently what I am rocking and I'm having a lot of fun with this job. I highly recommend it. And with that, we come to the end. Thank you all so much, especially if you made it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw here today, please leave a like. If you didn't, you can hit that dislike button as well. But if you do, just let me know why in the comments so I can hopefully help improve these guides, improve the content here on the channel. But that's gonna wrap it up for me today. For Ginger Prime, my name's Brian. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you next time. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.